What's up guys, welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. I have a flight to catch and uh, this was a short trip. So, starting off right with some screwdrivers. So Cheers sc boys. Screwdrivers and breakdowns. So screwdrivers and breakdowns. Yeah. He's in some, mine's got pineapple, <laughs> vod ho someone's homemade pineapple vodka or pineapple flavored urine. <laughs> I don't know which one because they're the same color. Is it good? Just super sugary. It's one. pretty good. Is it's it? just very sweet. Yeah. In this episode, we're doing Hacksaw Ridge. Pretty awesome movie. Insanely crazy that it's a true story. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I've watched this movie, obviously, for the show. And I was really confused because I was like, is this a really long love story that we're going to react to? Because it took a long time for it to get traction, for it to get moving. Yeah, I... Luckily for this, I was like, love story, because I've seen it before. Fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. No, Let's I get to the point. the whole thing. And Ugh. I was like, wow, this is cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then it gets to the end, obviously, and then you see all the stuff going on. Um, you kind of figure out what the point is. And then at the end of it, you see the actual commentary from the guy. And you realize how powerful of a story it is. So it's a really, really cool movie. Yeah, amazing movie. Um, guys, real quick, if you enjoy these videos and you like beers and breakdowns, just know we got some swag coming. Do us a favor, please hit the like button, subscribe button, and leave a comment below as to what movie you'd like us to review next. Whether it's military related or not, uh, when you guys have a general consensus on the movies you like, we'll review them. And basically just drink and talk. And just so you guys know, we do have to censor these videos quite a bit because YouTube's cracking down, but don't worry, we got your back. We got the uncensored version on our paid channel, which is up at the fngacademy.com or fngacademy.com. Uh, just hit tier three. It's a monthly subscription. You get exclusive content. And part of that exclusive content is uh, uncensored versions of beers and breakdowns. So thank you guys so much for all you members out there who are currently members of uh, the tier three program, tier one or tier two of our mentorship program. We appreciate you guys more than you could possibly imagine. And we hope that you're getting everything plus some from that program. And we're helping you achieve your dreams and chase your goals, push past the fear of failure and really trying to attack your dreams because that's what we're here to help you do. Use our experience of special operations um, to help you get to that next level. And we can help you guys there. Sometimes we just need a little mentorship, a little guidance and a little accountability. Um, so we, whenever we say we, we want to do something or we thought about doing something, uh, and then there's no one there to check to make sure that you actually followed through. Well, that's what we're doing for you to make sure you're following through on the things that you want to do. So get through that hardship, get through that fear um, and achieve your dreams, achieve your goals. You'll be super proud of yourself uh, once you get it done. So go check that out. We have the Ruck Trainer dropping in March. We have the uh, Ruck Safety Kit that's about to drop. So if you guys are training for selection, we have all the gear you need at the FNGacademy.com. So go check it out and make sure you pick up that gear. All right, let's jump into Beers and Breakdowns, Hacksaw Ridge. Joshua, pick up. Quick. So, if you have that, what is it, artillery, artillery, arterial? I can't use words. If you have arterial bleeding like that, you need to have a tourniquet. I know a lot of the movies they show using a belt, and the belt probably would help slow the bleeding down, but really, a belt's not going to be tight enough. It's not. Um, it's too wide. First of all, it's too wide and you can't get it tight enough. You need something that's going to be thin and think about like trying to cut your leg off mm. with something that's real thin like that. Obviously not so thin that you're actually cutting like a wire or something, right, right. but you think about what you're trying to do is go so deep into that muscle tissue that it compresses that artery into the bone itself to stop the bleeding. Mm -hmm. So you have to get all through the muscle and super, super tight, and then finally to the point where it's pinching it up against the bone um, and cuts off any, all the bleeding. And to do that with a belt, it's just not going to happen. Um, has it been done before? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. But I, I doubt it cut off the bleeding. It probably just slowed it down. And maybe that slow, you know, slowing it down was enough uh, to save their life. But And if, you, if that's all you have, then do your best to get it as absolutely tight as possible. But it's just better off just have a tourniquet or learn how to make uh, an improvised one. 
You'd be surprised probably how many people don't know how to do that properly because they've seen so much of it on TV done right. the wrong way. Because right. nobody's obviously taking courses on how to use a tourniquet properly. So out of all the movies I've seen, people use like what, T-shirts, mm. they use uh, belts obviously, anything they, they use like that, you see them tear something off and then tie it around. Right. You don't see them sitting there tightening it so f tight making sure that that idea and principles being accomplished. Right. And you so, can use T-shirts, but not just to, you're not just going to tie it. Yeah. You would have to get a stick, and that's where you need to learn how to make the improvise, and then you need to twist it until it's making so much pressure that yeah. you're actually cutting off that, that um, artery. So, yeah, people watch this, and they think, all you got to do is tie it around, and it's like, that's good. And it's like, no. If I have to put a tourniquet on you, I'm sorry, but you're going to go meet Jesus pretty soon. <laughs> I'm like, going to be like, yeah, hey, look. Did Hero. it. I did it. Where's <laughs> my, my award? award? Yeah. <laughs> Who's watching? Who's recording this? World star. <laughs> What's up, guys? This video is sponsored by 18 Alpha Fitness. If you haven't checked it out and if you want to go special operations, you need a good fitness plan. Go check out Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. He's a former Green Beret. He knows what he's doing. His post job from the military from Special Forces was helping uh, Air Force Special Operations get physically fit. This guy is on point and he's a great dude. He could do custom plans and uh, just a common plan that I use, which is awesome, the kettlebell program. But I highly recommend you get a custom plan. Use code word BUCK and he'll hook you up. You wagon burning son of a bitch! No, Sergeant! Let me see your Indian war cry, son! What is your animal spirit? Are you a garden snake? No, Sergeant! Are you a chipmunk? No, Sergeant! Are you a dancing reindeer? No, Sergeant! Are you contradicting me, Private? No, Sergeant! Good. Then I shall henceforth call you Chief <laughs> as a sign of great respect to your people. That's a cool name. <laughs> Thank you, Sergeant! <laughs> as fun as that the interaction was, I'm not buying any of him being a drill sergeant. No, it's hard with dude, Vince Vaughn. Vince I Vaughn as a drill sergeant? Like, no, dude. He's like, but when it gets to the war scenes, like, there's a type of soldier everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I really buy him just as a good sergeant mm -hmm. that cares about his people and is trying really hard. But it's just the whole him as a drill sergeant trying to be that mean guy is just like, meh. It's pretty hard to it's pretty hard to buy. I, I, for me, it's more of like watching him in all his previous roles yeah. leading up to this. For me to believe for any second that I'd be intimidated by Vince Vaughn, all right? I just feel like, I'm really? like Wedding Crashers was awesome, bro. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but what I think what he should have played into would have been funnier was to just be mean with the jokes, right? Like instead of the yelling, like you're not that guy, right? We, and I think unfortunately for him, we've had so many of those guys like in. Um, uh, fuck, uh, Full Metal Jacket mm -hmm. that have done it so perfectly that for you to come in, it's like, don't try to be them. Yeah. They've already nailed that role too perfectly. So just be funny and just be like, oh, I'm going to call you chief and then make yeah. them do the war cry. If if he would have taken more of that humor side, I think it would have been really funny. Sure, with the flat, serious affect. Yeah, super flat, yeah. super serious, and then d with this humor. Agreed, yeah, that would have been better than him trying to yell. He sounds stupid when he yells. And then his voice cracked. And yeah, yeah, it always cracks. <laughs> I've seen him yell and like, other movies and his voice always sounds weird when he yells. So I remember when I first watching this, I, I saw him walk in. I was like, "Oh god, this yelling is gonna yeah. be cringy." Yeah, and it was. I didn't like it. See, you feel sorry for yourself. You dogs don't know what tired is. We're gonna keep going till I drop. Gosh, hey, knock, knock it off. Try to sleep in. Right. Blanket party, not sock party, whatever. Same sh beating the f out of somebody to try and like get them in line or get rid of them. In this case, they're trying to get rid of them. They think Doss is just a, a coward. Uh, they're going into combat for sure, and they think that he's just trying not to carry a weapon, which they're probably assuming that he's not going to go with them. Right. That his refusal to carry a weapon is that once they get to combat, he's going to be hanging back, waiting for them to get hurt and they come back and then he'll help them. Right. So he'll be in like a, a nurse's position or something like that. Right. So they're, so they're like, dude, you're taking up a spot that could be, <clears throat> so they beat the shit out of him. I think it's interesting that the, the one guy that's likely the hardest on him mm -hmm. is the one that breaks up the fight. Right. Because clearly he's like, 
he he has the same convictions, but he also has some morals. Right. And he's like, listen, just go, dude. But I'm not gonna beat on you. Right. And I've never, I couldn't imagine like beating the shit of another soldier. And here's why: we all get guns. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so if he hangs on to that a little too tight. Right. So you go beat the shit out of him, and then he f- snaps, and now all of a sudden it's range day, and he does decide to pick up a gun, mm-hmm. and that's going to be his day, is to take me the f- out. Hell no. Yeah. I am not just going to go start f- beating the shit out of some dude to get his act together, because at the end of the day, that's his fucking problem. Right. Like, we're in basic training. By the time we get done with this, we're all going to go our own ways. Or, you know, I could just link up with the dudes that are really solid and we could have each other's backs. And I'll just make sure I'm tighter with them. Yeah. You know, even as a Green Bray, when we were in combat, um, there was guys that were getting out soon. And I could tell that they didn't want to be in the thick of it as much. Right. You didn't have a choice as a Green Bray because we were in combat and we were going after ISIS and we're doing foot patrols. We're getting gunfights quite a bit. But you could tell, like, their mindset's like, hey, I'm leaving soon, and I don't want to die, like, right before I get out of the military. Yeah. Which is, I'm not judging them at all, but I would just make sure not to be with them. Yeah. As much as possible. It's like, hey, if you're going to go right uh, and Tom's going left, I'm going with Tom. Yeah. Because me and Tom are going to go get after it. You're going to try and, like, hang back a little bit to be a little safer. Right. So it's, you just shift, shift fire. I'm not going to go try to beat the out of them or try to punk them into like doing it my way you know then he goes full gomer pile on you yeah he just starts (laughs) blasting you you. so yeah i don't know it's different times no son are you saying that you don't know who attacked you i never said i was attacked son well what the hell are you saying gus you lose half your body sleeping I, I sleep pretty hard. I just like that scene where he's, the sergeant's questioning him about who beat him up, and he's like, well, I didn't say I was beat up. Yeah. And it's, it's a strange world, and, and a lot of people would look at this and be like, oh, toxic masculinity. And it's like, it's just proving yourself amongst men. Sure. And that's never going to change. It doesn't matter how much you dye your hair blue or... Here we go. Let me just go for it. <laughs> I don't care. It doesn't matter how <clears throat> soft and woke the f- you are and how you think everything's toxic and masculinity is so toxic. And there's always going to be these standards of earning respect amongst men yeah. and men having to earn their right in the pack. And I, I hate always when people reference like men's behavior towards animals because it makes us look like animals. It, we're wolves. We're lions. I think all that. And if you tell me you're I'm a lion, you could shut the f- up. I'm not a lion. But we are human beings and we're men and we're supposed to be tough. And there's certain things that we just have to earn each other's respect. Well, the, the climate doesn't really matter anyway, right? You could have all the wool culture out there and you can believe in it or not, but it won't change the situation you're in at that given moment. Mm. So just because that exists outside of this little sort of box that you're in, it doesn't mean that you get to subscribe to that and then get away with it because somebody out there backs you up. If you decide to start ratting people the out and start taking this really weird soft approach to everything Mm -hmm. no one's going to be there to help you and then everybody hates you so like what's and that goes for everything not just the military you can have a group of friends a woke person's not coming to save you right they're just all going to decide that you're a douchebag and they want nothing to do with you so i mean it's going to benefit you at any in any organizational environment any hierarchy like based environment to look at it and say i'm not going to say anything yeah to have loyalty to have honor all of those things still matter. Oh, of course. And that's why I think these movies are so impactful. These movies are probably more impactful today mm-hmm. because of the woke culture. Yeah. Because young men are looking at this and saying, oh, shit, this is real life stuff. Right. This is real world. And all this woke nonsense is trying to convince me that that's real world, but it's not working. Yeah. Because I can go to school and be woke and, and talk about, you know, all the woke I want, but I'm not being accepted. Yeah. And that's hurting my feelings. And that's making me feel like an outcast. And now I'm not having the skills in place to be successful within my community mm-hmm. because I'm subscribing to this woke nonsense. Mm-hmm. And this stuff would work. And when you go and someone says, hey, who, who stole that? And you're like, you know what happened? You're like, it's none of my business. And everyone sees you knowing when to stay the f- out of mm-hmm. other people's business. Now all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, 
you could be part of our community. Now you advance in the hierarchy of life. Sure. Yeah. So it's like at the end of the day, there's works in social environments and doesn't work. And your right. woke nonsense, see how far it gets you. And that's why people are subscribing so much to these war movies, even more so now, is because this sh will help you in your life. Yeah, absolutely. It's not always going to be that type of a situation either. Right. It's not going to be so cut and dry. Sometimes it's going to be a little muddy. Sometimes you're going to look at something and say, I probably should say something. And you're going to have to make the hard decision to shut the up. Mm -hmm. It's just the way that it goes. So everybody bases it on pure morality sometimes. And it's like, it's not always like that. Sometimes you're going to have situations just in life where you should probably say something. But if you... If you know if you make the right decision, it's probably best to just stay quiet. Mm. It's, it's going to be better for you that way. But it's not always going to be like just good and bad, yeah. right? Clearly, I'm not going to give them up. It's not always going to be that easy. But you know, yeah, you in get. this case, some woke person would probably be like, "You should tell on all of them because they they hurt you. And they need to be punished. They should be kicked out of the military for yeah. their transgressions." Well, aside from going on TikTok, that woke person is not coming to save you or <laughs> yeah. help you or right. write you a f paycheck. That's just not going to happen. So. They'll use your story for views after the fact. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> and that's Fame. about it. They'll earn the, a new blue stripe in their hair, yep. the, however that rank system works yep. with the woke people. Show me you know how to handle a rifle, and I'll sign your affair. Corporal Cannon. Talk! Hand Private Doss, you fine. I won't touch a rifle, sir. I'm not asking you, Private! That is a direct order from a company commander! Refuse. And I will have no recourse but to court-martial you. And you will spend the duration of the war in a military prison. I can, sir. Dude, that scene is insane. Like, not only... They let you in knowing that this was your decision. Mm -hmm. And they still said, yes, you could be a conscientious objector and not carry a rifle. And let him in. Mm -hmm. And now they're threatening him with jail. Like, you're going to go to fucking jail. You're not going to get kicked out of the army. You're not going to go home. You're going to go to fucking jail. All right. And his conviction is insanely, uh, is an insane amount of courage. I think myself, I think 99% of people out there would give up our convictions to avoid that penalty. Or just to avoid your your fiance sitting in a church by right. herself. Like, when you're that would have married. overpowered me easily. I would have been like, I just can't leave her out to dry like that. I'm going to have to give up sacrifice something for myself to make sure I go and be there for her. You right. know what I mean? It's going to hurt, but I'm going to go. He has some insane convictions there. It's, it's nuts, and it took a ton of courage to just be like, I can't. I'm not doing it. There's not many people in today's society mm -hmm. that have that no. kind of conviction, that have that hard line in the sand. We're always, we're always looking to justify doing the things that we want to do. Oh, sure. If it's I don't like, want to work out tomorrow, I'll find... 15 reasons from right. here to then as to why I don't have to. Right. It's like yesterday was a perfect example. I signed up for a <laughs> Lachlan Giles uh, seminar on a four-day trip to film content, and then we're drinking <laughs> in the afternoon, and it's like, damn, I got a seminar to go to. That's a, I don't want to anymore. I don't want to, and I can come up with 100 excuses on how we're busy and we have work, and it's like, oh, I just have to get my together, get dropped off, and go do the seminar with a hangover <laughs> <laughs> well you did it and then i did it because it's like sometimes you have to realize that if you bend the rules and make excuses you're only chipping away at your own convictions and your own ability to be set in your ways or have those strong convictions you're you're convincing yourself that you don't have to believe yourself right and that's an issue because now you'll be that person that always says anything knowing that you'll just back out later. Right. And then your words become nothing because they don't tie to any action. Right. It's not only that, it bleeds into every part of your life. The minute you start believing everything you say to yourself at any given moment, you start be slipping into narcissism. And that's a very scary that's thing. A good point. Yeah. Because the most people, that, like some of the worst people that are out there, unfortunately, and I'm sure you guys have a lot of experience with this, whether it be a parent, whether it be a sibling, um, an ex-wife, they're, you know that they're going to go to the grave never thinking it was their problem. Yeah, it was never my point. fault, right? And you start slipping into that slowly when you start believing everything you say. That's because a really good point. Because outside input yeah. doesn't matter anymore. It's, yep. it's a it's slippery slope. You gave yourself that excuse, and that excuse is fact now. Yeah. And there was nothing you could do about it. Exactly. I had to work. There's no way I could just sober the deal with my hangover, <laughs> and go to this seminar and learn how to do some leg locks from one of my jiu-jitsu idols because I love that dude. Yeah. And I can't just suck it up. I had to work. 
And so you're right. You start believing your own lies. And and then what happens when I call you out for doing all that? Now you have to defend your position, even yeah. though you knew yourself deep down in there that it was to begin with. Right. But now you're going to defend it so that you're not wrong yeah. and that you're not weak and you're not just like admitting that you were weak at that time. So now you're just a narcissist. Now you're just yeah. a guy who came up with your own thing. Now you're defending your own thing. And then you're not going to admit any fault. You're just going to walk away. And the person that watches is going to be like, what a psycho. Mm -hmm. Like, clearly he's wrong, but he won't admit it. This part's scary, man. Dude. But we didn't see the body, so that's insane. Man. Ooh, that's rough, man. I don't know. These are the guys we're replacing, and then the first five truckloads, everyone's injured, demoralized, demoralized. Like everyone just looks like they've been through literal hell. And then the last truck is full of dead bodies of your people, and the, that's the unit replacing. Oh my god. Yeah, we can't show the full scene just because of length. But before the trucks of people go by, there's dead bodies. Then there's all the men, and then there's another truck of dead bodies. So you think the first one is it, which is bad enough, and then it follows by another one at the end. It's just like, it is just, you're going to die. Yeah. That's basically what it told us. They're like, walking you into a wood chipper. Yeah, go, go die for us. That's insane to me. I don't, that, I would, I struggle just to think about the reality of that. And, and then seeing that cliff and being like, go climb up it. Yeah. And then we, how are you going to run away? It's a Cliff, cliff, a yeah. 300 foot cliff with a rope ladder. Like, this is crazy, dude. Oh my God. It's insane to think that people have lived through stuff like this. Yeah. I've seen combat and I now would never imagine this. And I hate saying I've seen combat, but it's only to put in perspective that right, of course. I've been there and still, in, from my experience, could not even imagine what they've gone through. Like, to me, my experience is like, Mickey Mouse compared to what they gone through, that's insane to me. Yeah. And I've I'm good with my experience. I didn't want it anymore. I'm good. <laughs> like it was enough. And so that is like that's next level hell. It's insane. All this like movement undercover and all this gunfight, they don't have body armor. Yeah, I noticed that. How that shit's crazy. They were. Yeah. And so, like, if I had to think about being in this situation, I would want. Obviously, I want body armor. Which I looked it up. It was like the first kit body armor came mm -hmm. out, and it was like 1942 or something. Mm -hmm. But it was like steel plates. So the steel plates are like way too heavy for any infantryman to to move. Right. Shoot, move, and, and communicate effectively with that on. Right. So they, it's just not possible. So all they have is their flicks. But I would be, I would be wanting, obviously my body armor, but tons of grenades, as many grenades on me as I can. Like all the modern uh, weapons that we have today. Uh -huh. It's like, dude, I would want smoke. I would want incendiaries. I would want um, flashbangs, grenades. All these tools that we have would have just been this huge benefit to them at this point, and they don't have any of it. Right. They're walking around with no f body armor, their rifle, and minimal ammo. And then, like, it, they're having to throw satchels of stuff, you know, of grenades or whatever to each other right. to use them. It's just it's crazy how little they could actually carry on their bodies uh -huh. versus how much they need given the severity of the situation. And we didn't show it because it's it's difficult now to get away with showing massive people like dying on YouTube videos uh, in terms of the movie. But the amount of casualties they take at the very beginning of it when they first arrive and just run, right? Mm -hmm. So when they first get up there, after knowing they're all, most of them are going to their deaths, and it's a reality, they just start dropping left and right because they're all unprotected and they're all running out in the open trying to get to a point, that first ditch yeah. where they're trying to get to. It's just in incredible. Yeah. It's like at least 25% of them die yeah. the second they get there. You go through all that training, you go through all that change in life and all this stuff, 
and you're there, you're only alive for less than a minute. Yeah, it's yeah, it's crazy. insane. Yeah, I would be, I would want smoke, smoke cover. So let's say we got to the top of the mountain and we had all our normal stuff, you know, uh, 60 millimeter mortar. Mm -hmm. And so we could start launching 60s to soften the target. We could be throwing smokes to c give some cover and concealment. From there, just lobbing grenades, you mm -hmm. know, left and right to to also cover our fire, setting up uh, automatic rifle positions, which they do do that. Do do. do they, so. they do that. So, but it's just we have so much, many tools now that would have just increased their chances of survival exponentially. But that being said, then potentially the enemy has uh, the same access. Right. And obviously from other movies we have saw, uh, going to foreign land, they have the benefit of tunneling. And anytime tunneling is being used, I mean, that screws you. Yeah. It just screws us because all that cover fire, they're softening the target with artillery, but it's not doing anything because they're all underground. Right. So they're just those tunnels f us. So this is insane. This is obviously where the movie just goes bananas with uh, Doss and shows his, you know, how much of a hero this guy is. But the crazy thing is it, it did show the knot tying class in the beginning, and mm -hmm. that's how he knows how to do the harness and lower him down. But if you guys don't follow Pat McNamara, um, he's a former Delta operator. He teaches a lot of this stuff on his Instagram and his YouTube. And it's super important to know how to do knots because you never know when you need to make a harness system like this and could potentially save your life, save other people's lives. And it's just a cool skill to know. Imagine watching this and be like, I know how to do that. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes we, we always want to relate every skill to how practical is it going to be to, to use it. Right. But sometimes it's just cool to know how to do this stuff. Right. So go check out Pat McNamara. He's awesome, Delta operator. In my opinion, he's one of the few like um, kind of influencer military guys that's truly, truly just out there to help people and putting out a ton of good information and good knowledge to just genuinely help people. Mm -hmm. He's just such a he, – I haven't met him, but he seems like just such a solid dude that's like every time he's on social media, it's not like, hey, guys, if you want to be a man, <laughs> he's on there like, hey – this is how you tie a knot, and you should know how to do that. Yeah. He does land nav tips. He does all kinds of tips to just help people out. And one of them, it just reminded me of him because he teaches how to do this harness. Right. I can't see. Be quiet. Just be quiet. Hold still. I got you. Hold tight. There you go. Try now. Try now. I thought I was blind. Just love that scene, but one of the cool things that um, we didn't show, but the when he goes down into the tunnels, mm -hmm. first it sh he learns where the tunnels are and the entrance to the tunnel, which ends up being huge later on. Mm -hmm. But second, he saves uh, one of the enemies. He helps plug one of the enemy's holes, uh, his gunshot wounds, and then he starts lowering down injured enemy. Mm -hmm. And what kind of bothered me was that the soldier was like, they didn't make it. It's like, I get it. There's... You want to take them out because of the enemy and they're killing your guys. Mm -hmm. But there's always information that could have been right. withdrawn extracted, from them, yeah. extracted from them uh, as to where the tunnels are and all that stuff. So I think it would be better if they did make it and we just tried to get information on them. So uh, minor thing. But I just thought the irony of all this is the reason Doss is still alive mm -hmm. is because he didn't carry a gun. Right. The whole reason he's able to survive this entire thing is because he didn't have a gun. Because think about it. If he had a gun, he would have used it to defend himself, meaning he would have engaged in combat with somebody and lost multiple times. He was overwhelming odds against him. If he had a gun, instead of just hiding and maneuvering and running away to survive, he would have shot. Right. 
And once he shot, his cover would have been blown, and they all would have converged on him, and they would have killed him. Right. So he would have never been able to save all these lives if he had chosen to carry a gun. That's crazy. It's nuts. The only reason that all this happened is because his conviction to never touch a gun. Mm. Even in the midst of all this, he still at any point could have picked up someone's rifle and started shooting. Yeah. And said, screw this. Like, I this live. is too yeah. real. I want to live. But because he didn't and because he stuck to his convictions, he survived and saved tons and tons of people. Yeah, it's a crazy story. I always like had this. I don't. I just saw the on the one of my plane rides, the Last Samurai. Uh huh. Where I watched it again. I don't. I haven't seen it in years. Amazing movie. I haven't seen it at all. You haven't seen Last Samurai, dude? Mm. It's so good. It's just another Tom Cruise being an amazing actor again. Mm. It's like we've said this so many times. I don't think there's a better actor than Tom Cruise in existence. Mm. I think I he's agree. the best. I, I think agree. he's absolutely. If you just look at his career, he's the best. But anyway, this whole samurai thing of like. Dying by your own sword if, over if you've failed. failed. This whole, like, dishonor thing. And, and then he gets his head chopped by his own person. Like, there's, there's just something cra- I would never do that. <laughs> like, <laughs> I ain't doing that. Sh- I don't believe in suicide. Like, I like my time's coming probably soon and too soon as it is, for, in my opinion. So I'm not going to, like, help it. Mm-hmm. But anytime I see that, like, tradition and you see that they're willing to follow through like that, it's just... It's a crazy level of self-commitment to your beliefs and your values and your traditions. Mm-hmm. And that tradition is like, it's insane. It's crazy that there, there's actually people out there that they're like, hey, that's what you do. That's... And then they do it and you're like, gosh, damn. Yeah. And like, it took that... somebody that with matching convictions to beat them, apparently. Yeah. So, all right, guys. We hope you liked that episode of Hacksaw Ridge. I know the movie's long and we could have just went over the whole war scene. But honestly, we'd just get demonetized and it would just be a lot of killing. Yeah. Because that movie, that back end was just killing after killing yeah. nonstop. There was a ton of cool scenes um, and we would be here for hours and hours and hours going through all of them and talking about all of them. Like going in the tunnels and helping that guy. Like bitch slapping a grenade at one point. Yeah. Like that guy's just like, pow! Yeah. And he just slaps it back at him. Um, burying his buddy in order to save his life. Just and an then, eyeball saving. And then his eyeball and then just digging him back up and then saving him. Um, if you did that to me, if I was about to get shot in the face or stabbed by the enemy and you buried me and then pulled me out and lowered me back down, you're coming to every birthday, <laughs> every wedding. Like, we're family now. I, I'm never going to leave you alone. We're going to be best friends forever, mm-hmm. whether you like it or not. Absolutely. So, all right, guys, hope you enjoyed that episode. If you got this far, you're a fan of the show, and we thank you so much. Just know we got some merch coming. We're going to do some Beers and Breakdown shirts. we got a, a designer working on it right now. Please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, and leave a comment below as to what movie you guys want to see next. What do you disagree with? What do you agree with? And what do you think the best scene in the movie was? We'll talk to you guys next time. And if you guys don't think we read the comments, I do read the comments. I don't always have time to, like, comment back, and some of them are just so outlandish that i just don't even want to because sometimes you guys piss me off i don't think it's our fans i think it's people that drop in right and then just like spout off at the mouth about found on on the internet but we do read them so drop a comment show your love talk to you guys next time peace